Hey, welcome to Gracie Sports Hall. I'm here with Erkan Mete. We're continuing with our clinch portion of the complete Gracie Jiu Jitsu self defense course. And now we're going to cover clinching the head. We've been working clinching the body. We're going to cover the head clinch. We're going to start with a single collar tie. Um, this is one of my favorite positions. Uh, I do a lot of guillotine work, a lot of front headlock work. Um, you can check out my uh, DVD, The Guillotine Code, five and a half hours of guillotines. Um, and a lot of it is based off of stand-up stuff. And I work from this clinch position a lot to set up my attacks. Um, because something that I want you guys to understand is, uh, it's try to, try to apply what my friend Seth Shant calls two-door jiu-jitsu. Meaning, if one door is open and they close it, the other door opens. They close that one, this door opens, okay? You don't have to have a million options. Sometimes you try to build these flow charts of a million options, it gets very confusing. I don't need to put you into a million options, okay? Very basic, let me see, uh, sort of a um, Johnny Hendrix style thing, right? You're either gonna defend the big overhand right punch, which gives me the access to the takedown, or you're not gonna defend it and get hit. So you can decide which one you want. But I don't need to have an option for everything. That's a very, very hard option, uh, just two options to have to deal with, um, both because they're both powerful options, right? So same thing here, if I'm here and I pull his head down, I have all of these attacks. If he defends by bringing his head up, I have all those attacks. He moves his hips away, I have all of these attacks. That's, that's the core of a lot of my takedown game. It's very, very simple. Okay. But how do we get his head down? Okay, or how do we control his head, I should say. Uh, when I control you like this, this is good, this is very good, we have all kinds of things. But I'm not really controlling your posture. And if I'm not controlling your posture, I'm not limiting your power. Something I always want to do on the ground or otherwise is, um, is compromise your spine. Right? Now that means this way, this way. You're very hard to fight in a good position. If, if I'm twisted like this or I'm twisted like this, I have no power. Right? So I'm always looking to compromise a person's posture. Okay? So when we come in, there's a lot of ways to get to this. We'll just start. I'm just gonna make a hook with my hand so it's not a thumb. In general, if I can hold it in my hand and I'm pulling, I don't use a thumb. If I'm pushing and it fits in my hand, I'll use a thumb. We'll break that rule sometimes, but it's a good kind of just overview rule. Okay, so when I come, I make a hook. Now, we don't wanna to get too far into this, and you can play with the different places, okay? I don't like to hold down here at the base of his neck because like, it's very hard to break his posture. But I don't just hold up here high, okay? I will sometimes, but right now, I can move your head around without moving your body around, right? So I actually take that knot that's kind of at the base of your skull, and I put that in the middle of my palm, so it's kind of half and half. Here, now I can move his head around, but also his body around. So this is gonna be stronger, keep your head up. I can pull him down, but I still actually am not gonna end up maybe sliding off or just moving his head around. So it's, for me, that's kind of the ideal position. Now, if I just do this, he's obviously just gonna step in and clinch me. So we wanna put this barrier. This is a clinch in a frame. We talked in an earlier video about the importance of uh, structures, and there's two kinds of structures, clinches and frames. Frames, stop him coming forward. Clinch stops him moving away. Okay, or pulls him forward or pushes him away. Okay, so with one position, I can pull him, push him, stop him coming forward, stop him going away. So we're right here. Now, if I'm this far away with my arm, he's gonna be able to pop the arm up and maybe get under here or here. He's gonna be able to turn the arm, maybe start to throw me this way, okay? So when I do this clinch, I don't wanna be very far away. I wanna keep it in close. I'm a lot stronger here. So when I clinch, I wanna keep him in close. And so now he tries to turn to throw. Here he tries to pop under, here. Okay, so it's very really important that I'm in tight. Now, where does your head go? It can go a few different places. Sometimes, I'll put my head right in front of his. Okay. Now I'm not dominating his head angle, but what this means is 
his body's not in the way for me to attack here. If sometimes if I'm like this, it's actually harder to get to his legs because I don't have so much space. So sometimes I might just be here because now I can get in. Other times I'll be closer. Okay, now when I'm closer, it's just like the, um, the modified seatbelt position, right? When I come in, I don't wanna have my head just next to his. Because even though I've got that clinch, he turns his forehead into me. Let's start here. He turns his forehead into me. Now he's dominating this position here. So I'm gonna pull and turn my forehead right into his neck here. So now he tries to turn to face me. This is my positioning. Okay, so from here, I can be here and I can snap him down. I can be here in a good position. I can be here and dominate. My arm is tight. Now, from here, for him to hit me with that arm, it can be pretty hard, but this arm is open. Also, this arm can frame and push me away. So we're gonna control this arm. Now, I can, just control the arm like this, but I'm not a big fan of doing this. I like to keep that arm away from me. So I'm gonna either C-clamp with my thumb, the wrist, inside the bicep, and then there's other positions we can work. But for now, a lot of times I just go here, I control, he tries it, because what I don't want is us to be neutral. I grab your neck, you grab my neck, okay? By the way, you'll notice that this position is the same as if we had geese on and doing the classic judo position. It operates the same mi mindset, right? I'm controlling his posture with the head. With the gi, I'm controlling his posture. And then I'm limiting him, putting his power hand to control my posture. So it's very important when I come in, I'm here. I do not want him to circle his hand in, get control of my head. I gotta right away clear that arm off. And we can play into different positions, okay? So this single collar tie, by the way, is also the basis of dirty boxing. You can get in here, bow, bow, bow. Here, it's very hard for him to get away from that position, okay? So um, really powerful position, really something you guys should practice as much as possible.